Max Goble here for Rev3 Games. I'm here to talk to you today about the Bureau XCOM Declassified, which is, uh, well, the other XCOM game. We're all very familiar and well-versed with XCOM Enemy Unknown. This is the XCOM sort of reboot that was originally announced as just plain XCOM way back at E3 2010, and it has since been kind of uh, modified quite a fair amount. We didn't know where it went for a while. It was sort of in a, uh, I won't say development hell exactly, but uh, it's finally resurfaced. It's been given a new name, uh, and it's got, it's got a very different aesthetic and a very different style of gameplay, and I got a full three-hour hands-on demo with it, and I've come away with some impressions. The Bureau is set in 1962, at a time when America is kind of undergoing a lot of upheaval. It's kind of the end of the idyllic 50s, and the Cold War is kind of brooding, and the Cuban Missile Crisis just happened, and people are all just worried about the Reds, and at the same time, there's kind of, uh, you know, the Civil Rights Movement is taking place. So it's, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of shifting. So, of course, aliens invade, you know, like they do, uh, and you get kind of roped into this whole, um, this whole invasion problem. You play as a character named uh, William Carter, who is uh, an alcoholic, kind of, uh, kind of an angry uh, rogue, rogue cop who gets, who gets roped in to work with this, this mysterious bureau who's been put in place you know, to deal with alien threats. Uh, one thing that's it's very interesting to point this out, uh, there's a lot of story in this game. This is a very story-heavy game, uh, which is something that I was kind of not expecting coming at this from the, the XCOM angle of things. I felt like XCOM Enemy Unknown was very um, almost almost generic in, in, its, in its appeal. It was very much uh, like a playset as opposed to this, which has uh, got much more of an emphasis on um, narrative. I can't be happening. Every, oh, Christ. Uh, everyone's... Hold fire. Dead. Everyone, everyone's dead. The Bureau is still actually, you know, a strategic game, but it is much more about being a field commander versus like an overall commander. You are down in the thick of things with your squad mates and you're ordering them around, but at the same time you're fending for yourself. So there is a fair amount of shooting there, but to chalk this up as just your standard shooter is to do it a, a pretty fair disservice. Uh, so at all times you've got two squad mates with you on the field and you can command them by going into battle focus mode which pulls up this sort of large reticle which should look very familiar to anybody who's been uh, playing Mass Effect. Um, and you, I would say this is a lot more, a lot more precise than the, uh, the reticle in Mass Effect as opposed to sort of just pointing your guys in a particular direction and giving them a certain tactic to take or a, a special move. You can really actually swap between them a lot. and. Um, when you swap to a different a different squad mate, it'll actually show the battlefield from their perspective. And when you move them, uh, you can actually move the camera around the battlefield and really define where you want them to go when. And at the same time, it's not um, it's not completely stopping time. You're not like in pause. It slows uh, the game speed down to I think 10 percent. Get behind cover. Moving. Taking fire. Lifting it! So while this, at a glance, might look like it kind of adds an optional sort of turn-based, uh, you know, VATS mechanic, like from Fallout, it really doesn't. There's still a game that's happening there, it's just happening a little bit more slowly. So it's, it's more like kind of uh, strategic bullet time, if anything. Uh, on top of that, there's also, of course, the customization of your squad mates, as you'd expect from an XCOM game. Uh, you can, you know, outfit them in the different, their different classes. They have different perks, different abilities, different skill trees. You can change the color of their outfits. I made all my guys look real dapper. I put them in crazy, funky outfits. So if you're, if you're watching this gameplay, this is me playing uh, A, I suck, and B, my guys look fabulous. So anyway, you can customize your squad, and, uh, you know, you can change all their perks and everything. And of course, if they die in-game, you're pretty much screwed. Uh, however, this adds a, an interesting, an interesting dynamic because if you get if you get killed, it immediately uh, kind of reverts command to one of them, and you have to uh, you know coordinate your own rescue. So you're sort of playing as like you know like come to me, my X Men, like come come help me, and it's uh, it's it's pretty cool aesthetically. This game is really cool. I'm really digging the aesthetic here. It's got this great kind of retro look to it. Uh, they described it very much as being as being Mad Men influenced. I would go so far as to call it Mad Men in Black because they're, fi they're fighting aliens. So yeah, the Bureau definitely has a lot going for it. It's kind of hard for me to say at this point, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm madly in love with it, I'll have to wait, you know, to review it for that. Uh, but it's, uh, it's definitely got something going for it. There's, there's a lot of DNA from, from games like Bioshock and Mass Effect and Fallout, and it's like they've all kind of gotten, you know, mutated together and then sculpted into this thing that sort of is like XCOM's cousin. Uh, and if you're if you're expecting this to be like a, a dumb cover shooter, it definitely isn't. But if you're expecting it to be a boring old tactical turn-based game, it also definitely isn't that. But 
it's got a lot going on here. I'm, I'm curious to see the finished product. That's coming out August 20th for uh, PS3, 360, and PS3. I'm Max Scoville. Take it easy.